This amazing structure was the realization of one man's dreams. It was another brilliant reinvention of war technology for peaceful and scientific goals. During World War II, physicist Bernard Lovell helped pioneer airborne radar, allowing bomber crews to detect their targets in the dead of night with radio waves. After the war, Lovell turned his expertise with radio waves to a much more peaceful use, astronomy. He raised nearly 300,000 pounds in government grants, over three million in today's money, to build the largest and greatest radio telescope in the world. A fantastic, ambitious machine designed to uncover the mysteries of the universe. It's the size of the Albert Hall. With more than 7,000 steel panels, the telescope weighs over 3,000 tons. 10 electric motors aim the dish towards any point in the sky to track distant cosmic objects with extreme precision. The whole amazing structure works like a giant radio set. Welcome to Hancock's Half Hour. A pint? Why, that's very nearly an armful. Radios receive invisible radio waves from nearby transmitters and decode them into sound. Lovell's dish picks up radio waves too, but the signals it receives have travelled from cosmic objects millions or billions of light years away. By the time they reach Earth, they need a giant dish to catch them before they're decoded into astronomical images. With a radio telescope, astronomers can see objects that are invisible to an optical telescope. And over the last 50 years, Lovell's telescope has made hundreds of important astronomical discoveries, including quasars, contributing to our knowledge of the universe. But in the mid-1950s, before the dish was even complete, the British military decided they had a more important use for it and insisted that Lovell convert it into a giant radar that could warn them of incoming Soviet bomber or missile attacks. Making these top secret changes put Lovell's construction disastrously over budget and in big trouble with his financiers. The Public Accounts Committee, unaware of Lovell's secret mission, threatened to lock him up. Lovell knew he needed a miracle to save the project and himself. That miracle arrived on October the 4th, 1957. Hello? The Russians have launched what? I'll get onto it straight away. The USSR had launched a 23-inch diameter machine called Sputnik, the world's first satellite the space race had begun. Sputnik was harmless in itself, transmitting a radio signal back to Earth with information about the temperature and pressure of its surroundings for Soviet scientists to study. Anyone in theory could pick up Sputnik's signal with one of these newfangled transistor radios. Just get the right frequency and you could hear Sputnik bleep from space 500 miles above. But the missile that launched Sputnik was far from harmless and much harder to track. Sir Bernard Lovell, who still works here more than 50 years on, recalls the dramatic events of October 1957. This man in the air ministry has, has phoned me and said, that telescope of yours, do you realize that there, we have nothing in England and there is nothing in the West that can detect the carrier rocket, which is placed Sputnik in space, because the carrier rocket is a ballistic weapon. A ballistic missile would allow the Soviets to launch a nuclear strike anywhere on the planet. So Britain needed the dish to track the rocket. But the dish wasn't ready. Enormous emergency. Within a matter of days, we 
first of all, got the telescope working from the control system in this room, and then obtained a, 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 a memorable echo from, yes. uh, from the Sputnik, right. moving at 17,000 miles an hour over the mm. Lake District. Sputnik saved us. Overnight, Lovell's dish became a national sensation and a vital piece of Britain's Cold War defences as our early warning system against a nuclear attack.